Good evening, beloved in Christ, brothers and sisters. Uh, tonight's subject is uh, poverty of spirit. Becoming a human be uh, being involves more than conception and birth. It is a mandate and mission, a command and a decision. We each have open-ended relationship ourselves. We do not possess our being unchallenged. We cannot take out being for granted as God does. Nor we possess it the same way as another creatures around us. Other animals, for example, survive in mute innocence and cramped at necessity with no future horizons they are what they are from the start the law of their life and being is spelled out for them and they resign themselves to these limits without questions we however are challenged and questioned from the depths of our boundless spirit being is in trust to us as a summons which we are each to accept and consciously acknowledge. We are never simply a being that is there and ready-made just for the asking. From the very start we are something that can be a being who must win selfhood and decide what is to be we must fully become what we are human being to become human through the exercise of our freedom that is law uh, of our being now the freedom which leaves us to ourselves is not a pure arbitration or unchecked whim who is devolved of low necessity it reveals itself at work when we accept and approve with all our hearts the being that is common to us when we make it so much our own that it seems to be an idea from the first the inescapable truth of the being is such that it makes our freedom possible rather than threaten john 8 32 thus the freedom process becoming a human being unfolds process of service in biblical terms it is an obedience philippians 2 8 and faithfulness to the humanity in trust to us however this process of freely becoming human has its own inherent temptation but is it is very nature this process is trial embedded in the danger of going our way and trust with the task of making ourselves human we face danger of every side and we always are potential rebel we can secretly betray the humanity entrusted to us and we have done precisely this from the very beginning the first human beings refused to embrace with being and truth to them we can try to run away from ourselves from the burden and difficulties of our lot even going so far to take our own life under myriad invasions of materialistic dogmatism we can stifle the truth of the being romans 1st 18th in the short we can fall to obey this truth thus an aborting of work of 
becoming a human being. On the other hand, we may withstand this temptation and lovingly accept the truth of being. For the moment, you shall call this attitude love of self. Here we can might glimpse the deep and positive significance and the attitude of those ethical and religious scopes is usually overlooked and underread even when we use the eyes of faith. Understood correctly, our love for ourselves, our yes to ourselves, may be regarded as a categorical imperative of the Christian faith. You should lovingly accept the humanity entrusted to you. You shall be obedient to your destiny. You shall not constantly try to escape it. You shall be true to yourself. You should embrace yourself. Our self-acceptance is a basis in the Christian creed. Ascent to God starts in our sincere ascent to ourselves. Just as a sinful flight from the God starts in our flight from ourselves in accepting the chalice of existence, we show the obedience to the will of the Creator in heaven. Matthew 26 verses 39 to 42. In rejecting it, we reject God, knowing temptation that humanity itself is, knowing how readily we try to escape the harsh distress of human situation, knowing how difficult it is for us to bear with ourselves and how quickly we feel betrayed by ourselves, knowing how difficult it is for us not to hate ourselves. As uh, Bernalus points out, we can understand why God had to, pres to prescribe self-love as a virtue that one of great commandments we can then understand why we constantly need to help of help of god's grace we can then realize how much easier it is to say no instead of yes to oneself and why all ascension is first designed to serve this great yes. We must learn to accept ourselves in the painful experiment of living. We must embrace the spiritual uh, adventure of becoming human, moving through the many stages that lie between birth and death. Even that life of the child is darkened by the repulsive enigma of death. Soon enough, with our first field explorations and to the unreached inner depths of our personalities, are trapped through outright denial of what is the most of our own. Our flight from ourselves begins early. God becomes human and he took on our flesh. We say to this all casually because uh, evidently we are <clears throat> accustomed to consider only biological event that ex the external process. But the assumption of the human type of being is primarily a spiritual venture pulsing through the free activity of our heart. It is an unfolding story, an inner journey. It commences with the conception of birth, but these events do not tell the whole story. God becomes human. We are spiritual learners of our process, we 
what does it involve what motivation lie behind it paul describes in the famous passage philippians 2 verses 5 to 11. the synoptics also have something to say about it describing its inner trust in the story of jesus temptation in the desert unless we are greatly mistaken this story is biblical way of presenting spiritual process involving god assumption of humanity may god safeguard and bless you love's beginning by loving ourselves first first god ourselves and neighbors amen you know the father son and the holy spirit always now and ever and unto ages of ages amen